Welcome to the locker room. Everyone, if you're just tuning in, I'm Coach Rebecca Van, and this is Coach Marquis Freeman, and we would love to welcome her to the show. Um, so welcome, Coach. Um, Thank you. So happy to be here, Rebecca. That's awesome. I'm so happy to hear you. Um, if you're just tuning in, uh, make sure you have a pen and some paper and take some notes because what she has to say is going to be awesome. So um, I hope you're ready. I know I am. So, uh, Coach, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background um, and kind of how it led into your professional career. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, well, I've, I've, I've been playing sports as, as long as I can remember. Um, I played a variety of sports. I grew up in a very athletic family. Um, my siblings were all athletes, track, football, basketball, baseball, softball, you name it, uh, we did it. Just a house full of boys as well. So as you can imagine, uh, I've been tortured, but uh, we watched sports daily. Um, we discussed it around the table. Then we went out and we imitated our favorite players. And so my love for sports, it really, really made me a fan. Um, as an athlete in a house full of boys, I, I think I learned to own, to hold my own and that allowed me to play at the highest level collegially and also move on and play professionally um, because I just felt like there wasn't anything that I hadn't seen going against um, other women. And then as a student of the game, I, I learned the details. I just learned to appreciate that studying great players. And I think that made me a great um a really good trainer and, and, and college basketball coach. And then our famous debates around the kitchen table uh, about who's who, why they are, who they are, who's the goat of all goats. And then also who's going to win and who's going to lose. And I think that made me an outstanding analyst. And, and uh, yeah, and so I, I credit all of that to a house full of athletes. <laughs> that's awesome. Nothing like having a band of brothers around you to push you to your limits. That's for sure. No doubt. <laughs> Um, tell us a little bit about your uh, Max Out Foundation. What's that about? Yeah, so the Max Out Foundation was founded in 2010, and it's actually an, actually an acronym. Um, it stands for, it represents maximizing opportunity, unity, and training. And so uh, it's our mission to supply resources for athletes, their families, and our community just to better educate, equip, and empower them. Um, sports has been a vehicle in my life to a quality education, um, to travel the world and meet some some amazing people, and also to find my career. And so I want to share those experiences with young people and, and kind of give them that blueprint and that guide. And so uh, we do a number of things. We, we teach leadership and skill development. Um, we provide some ed educational programs as well, STEM programs through our summer um, summer camps. We also provide information on recruiting. Uh, we do back to school supply giveaways. Uh, we do a number of things in the community. And like I said, basketball has been an outstanding vehicle. And so sharing those experiences. And I also think that there's some lessons that you can learn through sports and there's some character building that is truly invaluable. And so that's the reason we started the Max Howe Foundation. Absolutely. That sounds so similar to, you know, my Rain Basketball Foundation. It's like hand in hand, just in different states. So that, that is amazing. And I look forward to, to everything that you continue to do with that. Hey, the more the better. That's right. I've got to. Um, okay. All right, Coach, tell us a little about your college days. Uh, tell us about your experience, how you got recruited, where you went, all that good stuff. Oh, okay. So uh, I was a I was a late bloomer, as they say. I didn't actually sign until after my senior year. So for all of you high school athletes that are getting anxiety because you feel like you've been left behind, um, something that I've learned as a college coach is that it's our job to find you. So focus on getting good, and we will find you. But my personal experience, um, I was recruited late. I ended up going to Florida a &M University, and then I eventually transferred back home to North. Northern Illinois University, where uh, I played my, my my final three years, but more importantly, I got my my undergraduate degree. Mm -hmm. And so um, my experiences were very, very full at, at FAMU and also at NIU. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. you go into college basketball and you just know you're going to play, right? Think about it, right? High school athletes, parents as well. 
Like mm -hmm. you get that opportunity to play college basketball. You know you're going to play. You know you're going to have an outstanding relationship with the coach. You know you're going to win. You know you're not going to you're going to play every game of your career and you know you're going to have you're going to consistently perform. Well, my experience was very different. <laughs> and when I when I got to the college level, um, reality hit. Um, I didn't play right away. Uh, I had a coach change. Um, I lost. We lost games. Um, and my performance was inconsistent early on. And what I realized is like I had to trust the process. And I eventually became um, a more consistent player. Um, you know, a lot of players, their, their dreams to score a thousand points in, in four years. Um, I scored almost 1300 points in three years. So uh, I, I eventually figured it out, uh, how to be efficient and effective. Um, I developed some lifelong relationships and teammates uh i've connected with and i'm very close to the, to this day um just irreplaceable relationships with coaches and and players and administrators around the building um i i received all conference honors uh every year of my career so uh i had an outstanding experience i wouldn't trade the bad for any other good because i know it's all about the process and when i say trusting the process that's understanding that you're going to have challenges and that's preparing you for that greater good. And so I like to say the dream is free, but the hustle is sold separately. So you can dream, but you got to put in the work required and, 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 and take it in stride. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's some very good information. And in light of everything that's happening, I'm sure there's those athletes who feel like, man, I'm not going to get seen. What am I going to do? I don't have a indoor gym to work out at. Hey, you got outside, you got, you can do ball handling. There's a lot of things you can do without being inside an actual gym. Yeah. And if I could add something to that, you know, I've uh, been watching a lot of documentaries. I'm sure you guys are watching um, The Last Dance with MJ. I've taken the time to watch some other things as well. And uh, there's a lot of people that, that made it with a lot less than what we have. And so uh, it's just seeing those challenges as opportunities and really uh, rising instead of running or finding excuses. Uh, my high school coach, Doug Collins, I like to say the Doug Collins, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, he always would say, uh, excuses are monuments of nothingness and they build bridges to nowhere. And so uh, eliminating those excuses um, and, and finding a way I think is, is big in this time. And, and I'll be honest, I'm going to date myself a bit, Rebecca, but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I grew up when they had VHS. And so um, being one of those seniors that wasn't highly recruited and didn't get recruited until uh after my senior year of playing in high school, um, I realized I had to do the work, and and so I, my mom would 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 attest to this as well. I was up stuffing envelopes, and Rebecca, you probably remember, VHS, like you couldn't. That wasn't a two minute download or a two minute video transfer. Like you had to watch the game as it played. And so when I'm creating these VHSs and I got two and three games on this VHS and I'm watching the game as it records, like that's hours and hours of work just to get it dubbed on this VHS. And then I'm typing up letters, personal letters to coaches um, and programs that I had I had studied and followed and wanted to be a part of. And so another thing I would say to those high school athletes is just as much as a coach recruits you, um, you have to recruit that university. You have to recruit that coach. Uh, you want to be in a situation that allows you to thrive and really excel and, and gives you um, a little boost into the world when you're done playing basketball. And so you have to make sure that you go to an institution that is actually going to propel you uh, and grow you as an individual. You know, a lot of questions that I ask our athletes who are, are in the process at Max Out is, you know, what will help you thrive as a person? What environment is best for you? And in some athletes, they simply just want to go play basketball and they don't they don't care where it is. And so we have that conversation about academics and what 
what they want to do after basketball. And so that's the number one question. Um, the next question that I would ask you is, is what's most important as far as like location? You know, some people don't do well far away from home. Some people need to be closer um, because that helps them excel, uh, being closer to their family, if they're family oriented, um, or having their family at their games or being able to get back home for holidays. Um, I went to school in Florida my first year and that was mm -hmm. tough for me. That was challenging. Um, and those weren't questions that I had asked myself. And so you got to ask yourself questions like, yo, like, do I want to play immediately? Well, if you want to play immediately, then maybe you have to reconsider what university you're going to. Maybe that's not division one. Maybe that's division two or division three. And there's outstanding programs at every single level. So finding out what is best for you um, and, and, and choosing the institution that's going to help you thrive, most importantly, in the classroom, but also on the court. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And athletes, make sure you do your homework, like she said. Like, it's not enough to let the media, you know, talk to you and say, "Oh, you should go to Duke or, you know, or North Carolina, wherever." Uh, they're they're feeding information. You have to know about the program. You have to know about the coaching staff, um, what kind of uh, playing style, um, and things like that. Get into details and get to know them. Uh, go to their camps, their clinics, um, and really reach out, like she said, and do your part because. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be hard, really hard to get recruited if you're not a right fit at the institution. So um, yeah. that's a big one, too, Rebecca. You said the type of system um, in, in terms of recruiting the staff and, and, and the head coach. You know, what kind of are they more transactional or more uh, transformational? And you have to know what type of person you need in your corner um, well before you get there. I look I look at the story of Elena Deladon. She was on the campus at UConn for, what, 48 hours and then decided to go home. She just could not do it. Um, yeah. And so uh, just knowing what's best for you and making decisions based on that and also making a decision for you. I think a lot of people do what their friends or their coaches or their parents want them to do. And ultimately you have to live with that decision for the rest of your life. Absolutely. So do what is best for you and make sure you're answering all the right questions and ask the right people. Everybody doesn't deserve an opinion. Um, so, so ask the right people. Yeah. An opinion or an explanation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving right along coach. Um, Let's talk about building relationships and um, those that have come into your corner. Um, name some mentors or someone that in particular has really made uh, an impact in your life, on your life, um, and helped you be the person that you are today. Gosh, I've, I've been fortunate to have an outstanding group of mentors. So it's, it's really, really challenging to narrow it down to one. Um, I think a common misconception is that you have to be old to have a mentor. <laughs> and mm -hmm. the earlier, the better. A uh, mentor is a person who uh, kind of provides that blueprint or guides you on your journey. They're a person who's further along on their journey and has accomplished some things that you want to accomplish. Um, it's also a person that holds you accountable, uh, gives you that truth over harmony, uh, truth is what you need to hear. Harmony is what sounds good. And they provide that truth. Um, mm -hmm. They give you some support uh, when you need it and they're accessible. And the earlier you have access to those types of people, you're going to be able to remove some hurdles or some barriers out of your way and you'll get to your destination um, a little faster than usual. And so uh, don't feel like you have to be old to have to have a mentor. And the second thing I would say is um, um, you can have more than one mentor. Me personally, Rebecca, I have spiritual mentors. Mm -hmm. I have financial mentors. I have professional mentors. I have coaching mentors, just people that um, really, really serve me in different areas of my life and 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 guide me along my journey. I think of specifically uh, just this newer area that I'm exploring. I'm now in the world of broadcasting. Um, so I serve as a, a, an analyst uh, in, for basketball and football. And, and one person who has really been a mentor to me is LaChina Robinson. Um, she's an analyst on ESPN. She's also a WNBA analyst. Um, 
an even better person. I'm sure you're familiar with her work, but uh, she's very accessible. Uh, she gives me that truth over harmony. She holds me accountable. She checks in um, and um, she's always empowering me and educating me on this industry and uh, helping me grow as a, as a person, as a woman, um, and also as, as a professional. So I'm very fortunate to have her in my life. So it's not a bad thing to have someone speaking in on your life and to help build you up. Um, I think a lot of kids think of it as people being critical um, and they take offense to it. And I think it's really important to find people that you look up to that can really speak into um, into your life, just like you said, because it is uh, a building block uh, for us to keep moving in the direction that we want to go. Yeah, no doubt. You know. Kobe had MJ, <laughs> you know, MJ had people that he called uh, Warren Buffett and, and Bill Gates, their best friends. They support each other, giving each other that truth over harmony, you know, some of the most uh, successful people in their respected industries. And so iron sharpens irons, irons, iron sharpens iron. And so understanding that and, and, and being um, humble enough to recognize that you don't have all the answers um, and seeking that knowledge, just having that student's approach um, because people um, that, that feel like they know it all or, or feel like they don't need those resources, um, they it takes them a lot longer to get to where they wanna be or they just don't make it at all. So uh, utilize those resources for sure and maximize them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you touched a little bit about um, your broadcasting career. Um, what are some of the people or events that you've been a part of uh, that's really stood out to you? Oh, man. Um, gosh, I've been so fortunate. Um, so I, I am a part of a, a group called the Rising Media Stars. And um, and I've been fortunate to receive development and, and, and get experience as a newer analyst. Um, Kevin... Nixon and, and LaChina Robinson have co-founded this and it's been a, an outstanding resource. And so I've been able to do some NBA games. I've been able to do some NFL games as well, being on the field and on the court. Um, I've interviewed some outstanding people. Um, gosh, it's hard to narrow it down, Rebecca. You got, that's, it's hard enough for me to, to, to make a decision on what I'm gonna eat at a dine-in establishment. Now you got right. <laughs> like, this is, this is tough. Um, gosh, probably the coolest, the coolest interview I've done, um, would be with Vince Sanity, Air Canada, also known as Half Man, Half of Everything, <laughs> uh, better known as Vince Carter. Yep. <laughs> like, just an outstanding athlete, an advocate for the game of basketball. Uh, he's just an outstanding, he's an even better person, like. He is a as a adult soul, and being able to interview him and talk about his experiences, past and current, um, he's the first player to ever play in four different decades uh, in the NBA, and he's just he's had some major accomplishments. And uh, so, being in this space and asking him questions um, were was pretty awesome. Back in 2016, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, interview Muffet McGraw. Uh, and that was really cool. She's just an outstanding woman, and uh, and and she spoke some some really cool words of encouragement to me. And so I've 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 held on to that. And then to see her retire in her light, um, I just thought that was amazing. But you know what? If I if I could be honest, I don't know if those were my favorite interviews. I did a college project and I was able to interview my great grandmother. I call her Gigi. And um, not many people are able to do that. One, not many people are able to uh, experience life at the same time at the same time as their grandparent, their great grandparents. And so I was fortunate to do that. And she was in great health and uh, just asking her questions about her upbringing and her life and I found out a lot more about myself. And so uh, that was an awesome experience for me. Um, I still have those recordings. 
Um, it's something I'll never forget. And it's something that I can give, give, uh, you know, the children that I, I pray to have one day. And then, um, probably the coolest game I did, like, there's no place like home, Rebecca. Um, I went back home to Northern Illinois university where I, I finished my college career. And um, I was able to sit on the sidelines with Andy Garcia and call that game. Uh, and that was amazing to be in the arena where uh, I found myself as a woman. And I put in a lot of buckets, Rebecca. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> in that space, uh, it was a whole new energy. Um, yeah, it was, it was really cool to be back home amongst those uh, lifetime fans as well. So there's no place like home. Absolutely. That is awesome. Um, I'll kind of kind of wrap it up a little bit for you. I know we've got I know you've got a busy schedule. Um, but tell us a bit about your upcoming role as an author. And um, what's the process of you writing that book? Yeah. Um, well, I'm really, really excited about it. I think this will be one of the accomplishments that I'm most proud of. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. And um, and I'm, I'm excited about it. I will say that the book is not complete just yet. Um, I am in the middle of the book. It will be done. I've given myself a deadline. It will mm -hmm. be published. Uh, self-published by September of 2020. Rebecca, I'm actually sharing this here. Like this is the announcement. You heard it here first. So, oh, <laughs> announcement. That's awesome. So, uh, but I'm waiting for the book to to um, title itself. I think it's the title is all about um, energy in the direction of the book, but it's basically on just developing world-class champions. And so it's directed towards athletes and professionals as I think the mindset needed and the uh, habits needed uh, to excel at a rare level, um, they align. So basically just discussing what it takes and who it takes. Um, it's a success playbook playbook for athletes and professionals. And um, I think it will serve not just athletes, professionals, but parents, um, CEOs, uh, anyone with an open mind to really learn and grow. I'm sharing some of my experiences in that book. And I'm also sharing some experiences of other greats in their respective industries. So be on the lookout. Uh, I will be sharing that publicly here real soon. I guess this is publicly. Um, but yeah, follow me on social media. Uh, check out my website at Marky Free social media. And then MarkyFreemanMedia.com is my website. And uh, you'll be able to get your copy. Awesome. I cannot wait. I cannot wait till September. It'll be like Christmas. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. Um, and along those lines, what is your favorite verse or quote? Um, share with us one of, one of your favorites. Gosh, um, that's an easy one. It's something that uh, I remind myself of daily. It's actually something that I have on this wall as well. And it's just a reminder that success is not measured by where you are. Uh, success is measured by, by where you come from and those you help along the way. And so many people think that success is is about being a millionaire. Um, I'm from a side of town that people often try to avoid. You know, I come from a single parent home, and and I've had my share of challenges just like everybody else. But I'm also a retired professional athlete. Uh, I'm an acclaimed speaker. I'm a CEO of a company. I'm a sports analyst, um, and and I I'm a soon to be author. And so uh, success is not measured by where you are right now. It's measured by how far you have come and also the people that you you help along the way. So uh, understanding that and keeping that in the forefront of my mind is it determines how I move and, and all of the different spaces that I'm blessed to be in. That's, that's incredible. That's incredible. And um, kind of lastly, to our athletes specifically um, who are listening, what would your advice be? Um, and them pursuing their dreams, how would they go about it? And what motivated you to be your best? Gosh, one thing I really pride myself on is the things that I've come through, the things that I've experienced. Um, I think that molded me and shaped me and grew me into the person that I needed to be in order to stand where I am today and understanding that there are no shortcuts. And so uh, if I could say anything to those athletes, Rebecca, I would say that adversity is inevitable. 
And inevitable means that there's there's no way around it. Like it's gonna come, it's going to happen. And adversity comes in different shapes and forms. It may be come in the in the form of uh, maybe you don't get into the school you you want to get into. Maybe you don't make a team. Um, maybe uh, you experience a loss, the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's this quarantine. Right. This is adversity as well. And so, uh, like my basketball journey, I've had different challenges. Understanding that that life doesn't ask for the, for the opportunity to unfold, it just happens. And uh, greatness is thriving despite that. You look at the story of, of Michael Jordan, um, the adversity he overcame. That now, on the last dance. Uh, you got some little ones that are there. You know. Yeah, I have to move back. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Um, he he had his share of adversity, whether it was. You know, the flu game, Kobe Bryant um, with the tearing of his Achilles. And he said it himself. He said, this is not going to break me. This is not going to force me to crumble or walk away from the game that I love. So he's choosing to rise instead of run. And we have people in their respected industry. There's Oprah Winfrey, who was told she wasn't fit for television. It was Albert Einstein. Who, who didn't speak until the age of four, and he was told that he wouldn't amount to much, or, or Walt Disney, who was denied by over 300 banks because he was told that he didn't have a big enough imagination, and now we're all trying to get to his parks, you know? And so it's just it's just understanding that you cannot have success without adversity and embracing that process. Uh, go get it. Go get it. Absolutely. Well, I thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your thoughts. And I look forward to seeing everything you're doing. I definitely will keep in touch um, beyond this. So I definitely appreciate you joining the locker room today. Um, I was definitely blessed by it. Absolutely. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Hey, Rebecca, you know, I'll say it again. What you're doing in this space is outstanding. Um, I'm so happy to see it. It betters the game. It betters us as human beings. And um, however I can support, I'm happy to. So if those are those who are listening, man, make sure that you guys continue to fan this fire. This is amazing. And it's been a blessing to be on, Rebecca. Keep dominating, girl. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Take care. Take care. You too. Bye. 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 Bye, cutie. Bye, cutie. Bye, later. Bye.